Hi everybody, it's Di Laughing and welcome to the third instalment of my Point Scoring Reborn Challenge. So, in this episode we're going to be exploring Jasper and Beryl Wards and uh, taking on the, the few battles, there's not many, there's going to be a shorter episode that prevail there and then we're going to be taking on Corey for the third gym badge. So, before we head into um, Jasper though, you can pick up the... Now you've got two badges, the Snubble or the Stuffle. It's a 50% chance of each from this house in here. I got a Stuffle, so I'll be getting myself a Beware before we carry on. So next up, we'll head into there. But there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about before we set foot into Jasper. Uh, the first one is about the weather. So on the <clears throat> during the first episode, I showed you how to download a weather-changing mod. Now, the idea of that was obviously to make the process of getting your event Pokemon so much quicker rather than having to wait for the weather to change accordingly. You could just set it and catch the cats up. However, I was thinking that people could use that to manipulate the weather to give themselves a battle advantage. Um, so, for example, if you've got a, a largely fire-based team, you could obviously set the weather to being a sun and give yourself an advantage. Now that's probably not such a bad thing if you think about it in Reborn City because all the weathers will happen. You'll get rainy days, clear days, windy days, sunny days. So all you're doing is accelerating the process, which is fair enough. But the problem is that not all the weathers appear in all the geographical loca locations in the area, in the, in the Reborn region. For example, up at Tanzan Cove, it always seems to rain up there. I don't ever remember being a sunny day up there. So if you were going to do a battle of, say, against Noel and to set the weather to being sunny, and it's never going to be sunny up there, then you're giving yourself an unfair advantage. Similarly, when you go on top of the mountain to take on, um, what's his face, Blake, later on in the game, it's always going to be hailing up there. So again, if you manipulate the weather to take the hail away and put the sun up, for example, you're giving yourself an unfair advantage. So therefore, I put a little clause in the rule to change it. Change the rules a touch. <clears throat> so basically, I've taken on the one relating to Dragon Rage because obviously that's no longer relevant because I said after Gym 2, you'll be able to use it. So Gym 2 has come and gone. So you can now Dragon Rage to your heart's content. But I've just said about the weather. I've said if the weather mod is used to obtain event Pokemon, the weather must be returned to the original weather prior to the battling. So if it was a rainy day when you started, you put it to sunny day to get yourself an event Pokemon, you must put it back to the rain before you do any battling. So that you can't use the weather mod to manipulate, um, to gain an advantage. That's what I'm saying there. I've also put in about obviously trading items, sorry, trading Pokemon. Obviously, you can get in and out of the game, but make sure you don't put an item, sneak an item back on your Pokemon to trade it when it comes back in again. For example, you could have a choice scarf on or something like that, something that's not obtainable at this stage of the game. So, things like an experience share, you can't get that till later. So, don't sneakily put that on an item, on a Pokemon, sneak it back in. <laughs> so all the rules are the same, point scoring, uh, I'll give you a table, and all the points are. So everything else is the same, I just wanted to talk about the weather first. And achievement rules are the same. Now the reason I'm not showing you me getting these things down here is that I'm using this um, playthrough to build up little second videos of all these things which are going to um, present at the end of this playthrough. So I'll have one that has all the field effect readouts and all the TMs that you can find as a separate entity. So that's why I'm doing that separately. Um, oh yes, and Morgan uh, has very kindly producing a scoring template for everybody. There's a link to it and the show more button. So if you want to put your scores up at the end of each episode, you can do so there and see how we're all getting on compared to each other. Unfortunately for me, Morgan is well and truly kicking my butt at the moment, so I'm really going to have to push the boat out to catch him up. But uh, <laughs> there we go. So yeah, if everyone else wants to play along and put their scores up, uh, the link is there for you. So there we go. Right, time to move on and head into Jasper. One thing I did forget, sorry, was the um, Battle 3, Battle 3, Episode 3 itinerary. 
Uh, as you can see, there's only four battles in the episode, so it's quite short compared to the previous one in terms of number of battles. Um, that's because really there aren't many. There's quite a few where you take on the, the meteor grunts and a few random trainers, but nothing really juicy and tasty enough to constitute a proper point scoring battle. So the first one up is going to be against Taka in the Malchus Forest, uh, against um, the Pulse Tangrowth and two other Pokemon. A little bit tricky. Then I put the Kling Clang battle next, which is another bonus singles battle that I talked about briefly. One Pokemon, one shot at it to try and take out the um, the Kling Clang and get yourself a little Leo. Now I put it second, but you can do it at any time. It really doesn't matter when you do it because it's not within the framework of the of the story. You can just go and do it whenever it suits you. Uh, next up, then we take on. Well, this is the way I did it. Uh, Taker and Zell. Up in Beryl, this is a real tough battle. Double battle, six Pokemon. That's a first real test, I think, of a player's ability, this one. Uh, as hard as any gym battle, that one. Real real nasty. And then the fourth battle is against Corey for the, the third gym and get your poison badge there. And then we'll be heading into Lapis. And I've got to decide yet whether we take on the Magma or the Aqua Gang, or rather join which one. So anyone's got any thoughts on that, let me know. I might just um, throw a dice, something like that, and let fate decide so that there's no vested interest in, in which is which. So without further ado, I'll see you up at Malchus Forest, where we're going to be taking on Taka. I have a good explore around the Jasper Ward and Malchus Forest. Everything seems to be as previous episodes. It doesn't seem to be anything added. So without further ado, it's time to jump down and take on Taka. So let me just have a look at the scorecard for this one. So, okay, here's a scorecard for Taka's battle at Malchus Forest. You're up against three Pokemon, and of course, one of which is the Pulse Tangrowth. Not quite so potent because obviously you will have better Pokemon by now, slightly evolved. So you're up against three of them. I can't remember, I think the first one's an Executor, followed by the Tango, followed by that pesky Chatot with Chatter, which could be a right pain. So the tiers are as follows, um, less than 26, if you're really brave, gives you 32 points, and banding all the way up to greater than 53, should you be not so brave, and get yourself 7 points. Again, pointless bonus being 7. Um, should be a ways to start. It's in the um, forest field, so there may be ways to exploit the field by now. So there you go. Right, so after that one, I believe the next uh, meaningful battle will be up against Tacker again in Beryl Ward. Um, so we'll see you up there after this one. I'll show you how I got on later. After beating Tacker in Jasper, and talking to Heather and she disappears off in her salamence, I notice there's a new little pathway down below me. I've never seen this before. And up here is an egg. Damn right I'm gonna take it. It's white. Ah. I'm gonna charge around and find what that is. I think that's new, I've not seen that before. Okay, so next up I'm gonna show you the Kling Clang battle at the rail net. Now, you have to release the little Leo first from in the daytime from the alleyway just below us. And your scorecard is this. Now, this is going to be the same as we did with the Pulse Time Road. Single Pokemon only and one shot only. Uh, again, no whiteout penalty if you happen to fail. And there's no Shed Injure allowed in this one because it's now available in the game and it makes the battle easy because obviously with Wonder Guard, this Kling Clang cannot hit you, so I have to ban Shed Injury from this one. And maybe a few others as well as we go along. So this thing is at 35, so which is our level cap anyway. So these are tiers, less than 20, you get 25 points, and all the way up to 8 points there, depending on how brave you are. Um, I believe it's a steel type, so anything um, ground or fighting or fire should be useful here. So yeah, it's the same, same, same as before. One shot at it. It's the only point you can get. If you fail, tough luck. You don't get another shot. So you have to take it out with a full team. So there we go. Right, I'll show you how I got on later. 
Okay guys, it's time to get serious because the next battle is against Taka and Zell up in Beryl. Now this is the first real test a player has. Uh, up till now it's all been child's play really. This is the first serious test of a, po of a Pokemon player's skill. This battle is really hard. Um, you're up against six Pokemon in a double battle. Levels between about what, 22 and 26, I think they are. But the big problem is, is they are quite high Pokemon in terms of fully evolved. You've got on Taka's side an Execute, then you've got the Pulse Tangrowth, and then his annoying Chatot. And on Zell's side, you've got a Glaceon, an Espeon, and an Umbreon. So these are all quite powerful Pokemon uh, at a time when the players maybe in the 20s and you, you won't have many fully evolved Pokemon so it's quite a tricky one it really is a tricky one so here's the scorecard for this this is a real tester okay so I've started off the lower tier at less than 50 um, I think that's probably just academic because that's that would imply two Pokemon maybe a 24 and a 25 I would say that's probably impossible let's see how you get on and then they're up, obviously, the next one's quite wide. Obviously, you're going to have two Pokemon or three low Pokemon, which is probably not a good idea. All the way up to greater than 150. So if you want to go into the full team of six, that might actually be the best policy just to play it safe because this really is a toughie. I've increased the pointless bonus on this one because it is a difficult battle. To get through this without dropping any points is quite difficult. So I've upped it from the usual sort of seven or eight up to 12 as this is a more taxing one indeed. So there's all the tiers, there's low, a big wide range there, so it just depends on how you feel and what your plan is and how brave you think you can do it. There's no there's no field in this one either. It's uh, I always thought there was gonna be a forest field, but of course you're outside now the forest area, so there's no field attached either. So it is quite tricky. I mean, if in the forest field you can bring a fire Pokemon and abuse that, but in this case you cannot. So there we go. I've got a plan, and I'll show you what it is in a little while. Right, guys, one thing you really must do is once you've um, rescued all the police officers, to return back to the police station and do the Growlithe Mystery Egg Challenge because the list of Pokemon that you can now acquire has, has grown quite a bit. Um, you can now get yourself one of these. Now there's some really good Pokemon on here. Um, well worth doing. So what you need to do is obviously breed your Growlithe in the daycare with a suitable Pokemon. Um, get an egg hatched and come back up here and he will give you one of these. It's predetermined at the start of the game so there's no point in, um, in resetting. But as you can see you can get some real corkers there. So thoroughly recommend doing that. Okay guys, it's a little while later. I've now done a bit of egg hatching. I've got my um, egg from the Growlithe little trade from the police station and I've hatched it and I'm very delighted by the result. I've also hatched that mystery egg that I acquired after beating Taka's and his Pulse Tangrowth. Uh, let me quickly show you what I've got. Look at that, I got myself an Axew. I'd never had that before. I normally get something really crappy and disappointing, like a Sneasel. You think Sneasel, brilliant, but then you can't evolve it for about 12 gyms. But this time, I've got myself an Axew, and it's a jolly nature. Fantastic. Not got the best stats in the world, but still, I'm delighted with that. I've also got that Nincada from the other egg, so I've been able to um, get myself a Ninjask and a Shedinja, which is really good. Now the Shedinja does complicate things a little bit because of Wonder Guard. I'm gonna have to exclude it probably from some battles because it does make things a little easy for you here and there. And I've also picked up a Bunnelby um, in the cave in the um, forest, in the Malchus forest. So yeah, that's quite cool. So I'm gonna try and get myself a Diggersby because they're pretty, pretty good. You can get one with huge power they're pretty good Pokemon because, again, they evolve to their top form fairly soon, which is useful in this, I think. So there we are. I just want to show you that before we carry on. 
So I'm at the moment, I'm trying to put together a team to take on the next double battle, which is a real tester. So I'm having a good think about that before we carry on. So I shall see you there soon. Okay, guys, it's time to take on Corey for the final battle of this episode. Uh, this is a gym battle, poison gym. Now, the field actually varies on this one, depending on what you've done up till now. If you rescue the police officers, you will be battling in the corrosive mist field. But if you didn't rescue them, uh, it's just a corrosive field. I read this on the uh, Pokemon Reborn forums. So it's, it's a possible different scenario. So you're fighting six Pokemon. I think the levels are around just under the 30 mark on the whole. I remember he leads with a Skrelp, which isn't too daunting. Um, and thereafter, I think there's a skin tank, but the big ace is his crowbat. That's a right handful, because that thing has Venoshock, and of course, if you're poisoned, which you will be, uh, unless you're going in with your own poison types, uh, it doubles, your, doubles the damage, so it's a real handful, that thing, and it's fast. So that's a real handful. Um, what else was I going to say? Yeah, I've noticed that there's no real steel types in the game up to this point, so <laughs> very difficult to go in there with a steel type. I think a pine coal is about the only thing when you evolve that, but that's not really much use to you. Um, so yeah, it's quite a, quite a tricky one, this. So I'll show you the scorecard. Right, GK, third gym. So, top end here, if you go in with, say... Four level 30s, playing it relatively safe, you'll get yourself 13 points up here. And obviously, maybe if you go in with three level 30s, you're looking at 25 and two Pokemon down the business end here. And if you are ultra brave and have a fantastic strategy, or maybe just foolhardy, you can go in with a single Pokemon and see how you get on. You'll get yourself obviously 50 points and an extra 15 if you manage to succeed. Um, it might be worth giving it a go because there's only nine points for failure, so you could have a couple of runs with a single Pokemon. It doesn't work out, you've only cost yourself. I'm not saying that, if you lose two or three times, you could start to mount up, couldn't it? Like before, I've made the second boundary quite wide because once you go beyond the level cap at 35, you're not likely to go in with two level 20s or anything like that. So you might go in with, say, two level, I don't know, 30s possibly in here to get yourself 44 um, so it's quite tricky and bands all the way up to the top so see how we get on with that and I will show you my my effort later Okay, guys, that's all the battling done and dusted for this episode. A uh, little bit, I'll show you what I got up to on these battles and how fantastic I did. And may you all cower in my wake. Huh, we shall see. Anyway, uh, last time I left you with a riddle, so I'll give you the answer now. And here it is. Uh, it was a non-poison poison touch with a moist side. Those bad vibes give you the blues. I'm happy to live both above and below the tides. The answer I wanted was a seismi toad. So it's the only Pokemon that's non-poison type that has poison touch, hence the non-poison poison touch. Um, it's a moist side, obviously it's partly water, but also as an anagram of a moist side within there as well. If you rearrange a moist side, you get Seismi Toad. It's also described as the vibration Pokemon, so hence bad vibes. Um, what else was there? Oh, and of course, it's happy to live both above and below the tides because it's part ground and part water. So that's all that was there. And blue in colour, of course. That's all that little bit at the end was. Um, so, there we go. I'll give you a new one for you to unravel. Okay, guys, here's a new riddle for you. Make no mistake, pie errors commence in black. 
a stab in the grass. So what's your back? What Pokemon am I? Should be a bit easier than the last one. And I'll give you the answer next time. So stand by and see how Die Laughing did in these battles. Make sure you don't die laughing at my attempts, whatever you do. Help. Here's how I got on against um, Taka in Malchus Forest. So the scorecard was this much. Um, 30, etc. So I've decided to go in with... Well, one, one fighting Pokemon. Now, the problem here is, of course, you need to have Cut in your party to get to the damn thing. So I brought along a level 1 Rattata with Cut, so that my combined total is only 32. It doesn't really add too much to my total. Well, only one. So I'm still within a band of 32. But I did think that was quite an interesting tactic. You could probably do that quite often with a sacrificial, say, level 1. If you're up against um, an opening Pokemon with Intimidate, and you don't want to have your main fighting Pokemon intimidated, you could just get rid of it with a level one, let it die, and then come in with the main fighting one, and don't get intimidated, so, yeah, so 32, that's going to give me 22 points, and seven should I succeed, so my idea is, obviously, I can abuse the field, I'm going to burn the field, and get my um, fire Pokemon on the go, so, Let's see how I go with it, because obviously I'm up against an Execute, probably taking it in one hit. Pulse Tangrowth is part of grass, that's not going to light the fire. And I'm hopefully I can get rid of the Chatot fairly swiftly. I'm a reasonably high level with my one Pokemon, but of course, if anything should befall it, I've only got a level one Rattata as backup, so that's not so great. Right, let's see how it goes. Fine. It's a bit laggy. Hey there! I figured you'd show up eventually. Come here! Why give him that stupid voice? I don't know. You came here because this thing, right? It's a real shame, huh? It has caused a lot of damage. Lives have been lost. Homes! Introduces himself as Taka! And he gives a lot of blurb saying that he's actually a team meteor. Automation link system, Exaggerata. Morphs Pokemon, amplifies its power. I could do with one of them. Senio Pokemon can come supercharged. And its destruction in Jasper is because of that. Pretty hard on a Pokemon. But he can't be nice because he's from Team Meteor. And he's got to kick our ass. <laughs> Don't take it personally, it's strictly business. Come on then, Taka. Ooh, why are we so laggy today? <coughs> we just eyeballed each other for a while. Boom! Okay, so... Shall I go for a stockpile or should I just go straight for it? I'll give this thing the protective pads as well, which is supposed to protect you from secondary effects. So I'm hoping that that includes the confusion that comes with chatter. I don't know, I've not tried it. So let's try a lava poom anyway. One hit KO, perhaps I could have gone lower. Difficult to know really. I should test it out by going really low. Oh, he's bringing the chat out straight away. I'm staying in. Now then, I think I'll probably stick with Lava Boom because I get stabbed. And the field is ablaze anyway. That may not be good. Easy peasy. I think I could have got away a lot less. Damn. Missed opportunity. Perhaps. It's a shame it has to come to this. Boom. I can't see it doing a great deal to me. I've got seven levels on it. 
Yeah, I think I've missed an opportunity here. I think I could have gone in a lot lower. And I burned it. Well, it's a waste of time growing, isn't it? Isn't it? Time growth. Bye bye. Well, that was really easy. Oh, I missed a chance there. I could have got a lot more points. Damn. Camera up to his beast. Yeah, I had to level it all the way up to 33, of course, then regress it a couple of levels to get myself into that bracket. But it looks like I could have got a lot more. He tried. So that's it. Okay, let me just get my points. So it was 22 and 7. Let me update my card. So 22 on there, goes to 27, 7 more on there goes to 64, that's another 34, I'll try and get it right, I'll update these this lot later down below, right okay so that's that lot, nice, I think I could have really got a lot better, yeah never mind, I think I, think I could have done that maybe on the bottom level on that one, in hindsight. Not to worry. Right, move on to the next battle. I'll see you up there. Okay, so next up, it's the Kling Clang battle, level 35 thing. So I'm going to, going to go in with my camera up, which seems the most obvious choice. I can't think what else you could really go in with, to be honest. Uh, I'm going to 27. I could probably go a lot lower. I'm going to play a bit safe, so let me just see what the scorecard is for this one. 27, that's going to get me 14 points and 6 bonus, but I really, really want to get hold of that Dithlio right now because it's going to be a bit, and I, it's one of my favourite Pokemon, so I want to get it straight away. Okay, let's go and see how I get on. Do I need any, any on my Pokemon? I reckon I could have do this quite a bit lower. But let's try it. I might be wrong. Yo! Here it comes. Okay, so it is level 35. I'm 27. I'm thinking Earth Power. Probably. See, that's quite a big chunk. That's taking 24 off me. Yeah, I don't think I could have done a lot lower. Maybe another two or three levels, possibly. Unless you get lucky, of course, with this. Yeah, I reckon maybe 22 or 23 is your lowest on that. But I'll take it. Yay! <laughs> right, let me score my card. 14 and 6. Where's my, where's my mouse gone? I'll pick up you in a moment, matey. Let me just do my score. 14, so that goes to 41. Um, 6. 70, so it's 20 more. Nice. But the real deal is this little baby. I want. I'll think on later. Let's have a look at your baby. Relaxed. Mm. <laughs> mm. Bring defense. Pretty good, pretty good. Of course, the slowest one is 11, which is the one I wanted the most in. But not to worry. Okay, I could always breed you anyway. Nice one, right. See you on the next one. Okay, so here it is. This is the battle up against Zell and Taka up in Beryl. Now this is, as I said, a real tough battle. This is as hard as any gym battle, this one, especially this stage in the game, because you're up against such difficult Pokemon when the player might not necessarily have um, an equal footing. Um, you might have a load of Pokemon in their second evolutionary stage, and it makes it very difficult. So let me just remind you of the score card. So here we are, you've got all big range, depending on how um, 
good your plan is and how brave you are. I'm going to go in here. I've got two fighting Pokemon. I'll show you now. So I think mine comes to something like 68. So I'm going to go for 39. I've got a plan. I don't know if it's going to work. I shall show you. Right then. Um, here's my team. No, I've had to bring two fight. I've had to bring my Ratatar along um, because I need a cut to get here. But it's only one, so gives me 69 in total. So it puts me in that tier of lessons between 60 and 70. So let me just double check that. Whoops, not that one. Why did he do that? Yeah, so I'm in here. 69. So if I do get it, oh, 39 points is a good haul. So I've been busy. I've done a lot of work on this. I put a lot of effort into training these, just these two up to 34, which is just below the level cap. Now I've been breeding. I've been to the daycare. I bred my female Leo with a, a semi seer, a male one. And I've got myself, I'm not a single, so the Pansia, sorry. And I eventually got myself a male one, which is cool. Uh, but I got a modest nature. So that's really useful. It took me a while to get one of them. And I've also EV trained it in special attack up to 252. I managed to find um, one of the repeat trainers in the Grand Hall. Had a Natu, which gives one point in special attack. So I fought him precisely 252 times <laughs> to, to max out special attack. And I've also got rivalry as well. So, and of course, what I had to do in order to get Flamethrower on it, um, it evolves at 35, but I had to prevent it evolving because Leo gets Flamethrower at 36. Uh, Pyro gets it at 38. So I had to prevent it from evolving at 35 get it up to one more level at 36, get Flamethrower, now that's right on the cusp of when it starts to um, disobey you, get Flamethrower and then I've evolved it and then put it back down a couple of levels. I've given it a Telluric Seed as well, which will give us a one turn with a spiky shield. It does increase my attack, but I'm not, in, it's all special attack, so doesn't, what I want is the one free turn without getting hurt. Because what happens is the, the AI, well, I'll just show you my other one, Back burner. Um, obviously not quite as good serious nature, which is neutral. I have maxed out its special attack again. I've got anger point on this one. So again, I'm hoping to use firepower. And again, it's a lyric seed to give me a free first turn without getting hit. Because what happens is I found in the past, the AI, the Glaceon will use um, Icy Wind to slow you down. And that's a real nuisance because then you take um, your second and all the, and all the subsequent hits and that's a real nuisance. And also the executor turns to, tends to like to leech seed you, which is a real pain in the butt. Right, having said all that, it's time to get stuck in. Um, I don't know if it's going to work. I mean, previously I've only attempted this with a full team of six. So trying to get it with two might be typical, I mean, if I get a critical hit or something nasty goes on, I've got no backup. But that's the name of this game, so let's see what we can. Zell, you! Oh, hey! <laughs> what is it now? Trainer that defeated the Pulse. Die Laughing, come along. He's invited us. Oh, thanks. Die Laughing is responsible for destroying the Pulse. Ah, that was you, an alley cat parading as a tiger. Etc. Etc. I will introduce you to a cold pain of reality. And in comes Heather. Hold it right there. Daughter, the Barrel Ward gym leader. I know too well who she is, but why is she here? <laughs> Come to stop you. Okay. You will learn someday. I'm here to beat you up. Okay, so Taka and Zell deal with Die Laughing and protect the pulse. Leave the girl to me. Okay, here we go. Um, I guess I have to. Sorry, Die Laughing, but it's payback time. Okay, here we go. Can my doosome? It would be great if my little ratata at the end could do a quick attack and finish the, finish the battle. Right, back burner. Well, my plan is I'm going to yawn this thing to put it to sleep. 
so it can't bloody leech seed me. And I'm going to try and concentrate on the right hand channel. So let's try that. And I'm hoping I can one hit the Glaceon because I'm 10 levels higher. So I should be able to. Let's go for it. Boom. Right, so you leech seed. Ah, so it doesn't. The Telluric Seed doesn't protect you from that. Damn, that's a damn shame. That is an annoying. Well, again, I'm just going to concentrate on that side. Ah, oh, you've withdrawn, have you? You little shit. Kill it. Yes! And the trouble is now... All oh, right, okay, that's not so bad. Again, I'm going to concentrate on that. I want to try and get one-on-one -on -one against the Pulse. So, yeah. Probably take two hits and then be on it. Very defensive. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Don't do that. As long as my Pyro is all right, I think I should be all right. Cool. Right, so we've got two-on-one against the Execute now. Ah, oh, you Elite Seeded us both. It shouldn't matter too much now because I've got plenty of health. So this thing goes down next. Do I need to heal? I don't. I want to try and get my pointless bonus. Please don't freeze. Okay. Right, so. Is it worth doing an echo now? We'll just bang you in the flamethrower. I'm hoping two hits on the pulse will do it. Bring it down. Okay, so I'm not going to get leech seeded this turn. Okay. I reckon flamethrower won't quite kill it, but of course backburn is confused. So if it breaks the confusion, I think I've got it. Ah, so close! Come on! Oh, you easel. I should be all right though. Pyro is quicker. I'm going to take it out next turn. So I think I've got it in the bag. Okay. Okay. Don't freeze. Please don't freeze. I'm just going to do it. Pyro, do this because it's quicker. Yes. Get in there. All right. Two Pokemon. Oh, well. I wonder if I could have done it less. I don't know. It would have been tight, I think. Well, that's not good. The pulse has been deactivated. Okay, so let me adjust my scorecard. All right, so I got a whopping 39 on there, which puts me to 280. And I got a bonus of 12, so that's 82. So that gave me 51 more on here. So that's, oh God, what was that, 45? I'll check it after. Right, that went very well. I didn't expect it to do that. I thought might, I might lose at minimum a couple of potions. Excellent, righty-ho, right, moving on. Right, so I've got a bit more exploring to do. There's a few event things you can do now before we have to take on the poison gem. That should be fun. Right, see you up there. Okay guys, um, I've just had a quick review of my scorecard. I've, I've basically made a horse's ass of my adding up as usual. My arithmetic is terrible. So I've just checked it with the calculator. <clears throat> I think these bits are okay, I've just added it all up wrong, so it should be 350. I started the episode 10 points too low, uh, I checked my card from the, the end of the last one and I was uh, added that up wrong, so it was 10 too low to start with, and I added up all these wrong as well. So I'm pretty sure I'm right now, um, I've checked it, so I'm hoping I'm, I'm on the right um, right track, but there we go, <laughs> right, hope we don't make any, I'll, I'll definitely do it with a calculator in the future instead of trying to do it with my head, because my head is full of holes. So, here we go. Okay, guys, it's time for Die Laughing to take on Corey. Now, 
looking at the scorecards that um, especially Morgan has put up, um, he's kicking my ass at the moment. And I don't, and I, you know, I don't know. So I think I'm going to have to roll the dice here to try and make a bit of a comeback. So I'm actually going to have an attempt with a single Pokemon. I'm going to go in with Buck's Fizz, my Digger's Beef. Now, what I'm hoping to do... I haven't... I've even trained it a bit, but it's got huge power, which attacks... Uh, which increases my attack stat. So its attack stat is actually 112. I've given it a Petcha Berry, so I have one turn without being poisoned. Um, I'll be poisoned by the corrosive mist. The Petra Berry will cure me, and then next turn I will be poisoned. So I've got Facade. I've been to the arcade and I've got myself Facade. Now, it's a space 70 move, however, the attack is doubled in power if I have a status effect, i.e., if I'm poisoned. So my plan is turn one, use agility. Hopefully I'll outspeed everything. Don't know about the Crobat though. I'm hoping I'll be faster than it. Um, I can't be sure. So after I use agility, obviously, first turn, I'm not going to get poisoned. Then I use agility, I'm going to get poisoned. Then Facade will deal double damage. So I'm hoping to sweep the gym with that as I go through, because I'll get stab and it'll be doubled. And I'm at 34 in terms of level. So that's my plan for this one. I could go wrong, of course. In fact, it probably will. But I think it's worth a go. It's only going to cost me nine points if I fail. So that's going to be my plan of attack. So let me just remind myself of the gym card. So I'm going to try and get myself 50 points plus 15 if I succeed with my single Pokemon. I'm probably not going to get the pointless bonus because almost certainly along the way I'm going to have to um, give myself a Hyper Potion or something along the way because keeping six Pokemon without taking in too much damage is going to be hard. And of course that Skun Tank could have Aftermath, which is a bit of a nuisance. So anyway, let's just see how I get on. Let's give it a give it a whirl. Hi, Corey. Like your, like your purple hair. So you found me after all. Yes, we destroyed the Pulse Tangrowth systems. And we revived... Yes, we did all these goody-goody things. And in front of your daughter. I want both. I will show you misery. I like it. Okay, let's go and get shown some misery. <gasps> Here we go. Take your place. I will bar nothing. I forced his hand. He's got nothing less to, left to lose. She was his singular denial. My one hope. And she may never speak to me again. And why? Why did it happen? You. Well, nothing to do with joining Team Meteor and etc. But never mind. He's just blaming me for everything. So here we go. Suffer. Okay, I'm actually hoping to use the field to help me, because it's going to poison me. Right, so, agility. So I've got a, oh, I've got a big level advantage. I thought they'd be near the 30 mark bubble, eh? So that is strengthened by the field. See, my other option was to bring in my Empoleon. So now it's Facade. Ah, oh, you've got a bloody focus sash. You bloody nuisance. Still looking good. So now I'm poisoned. So I'm down to nearly half health on the first bloody Pokemon. And he uses it, so I'm going to have to inevitably heal. Especially when I come to the skin tank, because the aftermath could take me out, so I've got to be careful. What are you going to bring out next? Crow gun. I'm going to just hit this straight away. 
Oh, you swine. All right, I'm going to have to heal up. So I'm going to blow my pointless bonus immediately. There's no way I'm going to survive four more Pokemon. Is it worth... Is it worth using a full restore? My pickup Pokemon have got me loads of these. I think I will. No, I won't actually. I want to stay poisoned. Because the fast aid has doubled. I know I'll get poisoned. Oh, that's nice. I don't mind you doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so that's one potion I've used. Just make a note, because I probably might have to use another. Three left. Going well, though. It's done. Right, this is this. So, will it have aftermath? It bloody well does, so I'm going to have to heal up again. Who am I going to just about survive? Oh, three! Sheepers, that was close. So a second potion. That was a bit too close for comfort. I don't flinch. Oh, he missed! How did he miss? Hmm, okay. Must be something to do with fuel. Alright, let's whack you out again. So you're level 28. Boom. Right, this is the one. Fingers crossed. Am I going to be quicker? Because I'm poisoned, Venishock will probably kill me. It's level 30. Drum roll, please. Go. I'm faster. I'm probably going to kill it. Oh, yeah! One Pokemon! That's what I'm talking about. Yes! Well done, Bucks Fizz. Absolutely beautiful. I didn't expect that. That was actually relatively easy. Everything is va varnished. No, no, vanished. Right, quick, let me quickly do my scorecard. I oh, 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 oh. Oh, hang on. Right. 50 points! Didn't get that, because I need to use this potion, so that goes... Oh, sorry, I got my single Pokemon, uh, single Pokemon, which is 15 on there, so that goes to 97. I did incur two penalties, however, because I used two potions, but it's not at all bad, is it? Excellent, so that... Oh, where do I go to now? Hang on a minute. Oh, gosh. Um, 15, 345... 442, 413, check it after. Right then, let me have a look at my Pokédex. Oh, I'll have to go through all the blurb first. Savor this victory, I certainly will. Yeah, 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 what? yeah. Barrel Bridge, I can't wait. Okay. Oh, he doesn't give us a TM or anything, does he? What a git. Um, let me have a look at Pokédex. So what am I up to now? I have got 132 owned. I really could do a bit more work on that, couldn't I? So 132 owned. Whoops, that's not that. Where's my scorecard? Where's the die laughing? Here it is. Okay, cool. Let's have a look at this one. So, what have we got? We've got... Let's have a look at TMs first. I have one, two, three, four, five. So that's 25 points. I have still... Do I have two department store stickers now? I think I do. Yeah, so that's 10 for department stores. 
There's no way to actually check that, but I know I've got two, so I picked up that other one. Um, what else have we got? Pulse decks, one, one. <laughs> so there's five more. Field notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's 40 points. I think that's everything, isn't it? At this stage. So it's 80 points altogether. So that comes to 212 at the bottom here. So that puts me on 625, I think. I will check though, because I have been known to add things up wrong on occasion. Well, lots of occasions. Right, that's that one, guys. Um, post your scores down below and let me know how you get on. Next time we're going to head into Lapis, so we're going to have to make a decision on whether to take on the Magma Gang, or sorry, to join the Aqua or the Magma Gangs. So uh, give me your thoughts. I might just roll a dice on that one and see how we get on. So I'll catch you guys on the next episode. See you soon.